Number nine from the 2007 High Maths paper two, transformations of graphs, but unfortunately transformations of exponential graphs. They can be a bit more confusing when you look at them in the sense of which part is inside and which part is outside after the calculation. It would make it easier if I did this. If I put the negative x in a bracket, that means that this negative is affecting the initial values you're putting in before you even start to work it out. So it's not changing the answers. Whatever the graph of this looks like, all the answers will stay the same. They'll just be in different positions. And what that says is, you might recognise, is it's just going to be reverse. It's flipping over. Because this says, to find the value at a particular, to find the answer at a particular value of x, like what's the answer at x equals 1, I've got to go to negative 1, get its answer, and bring it there. So I get a flip over. All that happens in here is it's going to reverse horizontally. So that it'll just end up looking like this. So if I put down a set of axes like that, then I can just switch that over here and draw it. So it's going to end up looking like this. Where that point stays the same, so that's still at 1. But the point that was at 1a will now be at negative 1a. And those are the only points I can put down. That's the graph for part a. Now part b is actually quite tricky by putting two alterations within the initial values before the evaluation. That doesn't normally happen. To sketch this graph, it's not just a case of saying, oh, I've got negative x already, as in that graph there. So all I've got to do is, and then you think if it's a, a 1 being added on, the graph goes back 1, because then it would end up like this. I would have that point would move back to negative 1, 1, and this intersection with the y-axis would be a number less than 1. Now one thing I didn't note, note, um, note here was a is a number greater than 1. No. If you've got a graph where the alteration inside is made up of two parts, it's the opposite of whatever it says that takes place. It's almost like solving the equation. You have to do whatever it says in the reverse order. So in this case, it would be, if I was solving that equation equal to a number, it would be subtract the 1, yes, then divide by the negative 1. So that's all that happened there. That was just divide by the negative 1. So it just reversed. So this says it should really be subtract 1, then make it negative. So it's subtract 1 so that the point 1a moves to the point 0a. Notice a totally different position. Then make it negative. So I'll pop it here and sketch that in. So it's looking something like this, where that's the point that was originally at 1a, so it's now at 0a, so it's actually cutting at a. The point 0, 1 has actually moved forward to here. That's the point 1, 1. And if I wanted another point, which I suppose I could put in here, for instance, I could just say, well, what happens at negative 1? At negative 1, it would be 1 taken away negative 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. That would be the negative 1a squared if they wanted a point in this side for some reason. But those were the transformations of the original points, though. I suppose you could have done that without considering the transformation just by saying, right, I don't know what's happening here, so I'll just pick values of x and put them in. So what happens when x is 0? When x is 0, I've got 1 take away 0 is 1, so I've got a. What happens at 1? Well, when x is 1, I've got 1 take away 1 is 0. a to the 0, anything to the 0 is 1, so I've got 1, 1. What happens at negative 1? Well, I just said it. At negative 1, I get the answer a squared, and then draw the graph through them. You could have done that instead, instead of even considering transformations of graphs.